And could we just go to the next slide? The sponsor is from the Emporio de Piazza Campestre. Is any good? <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. I get my, G get my uh, diploma of Italian. I can do buongiorno. Uh, sorry about the resolution. But the, they're very, Margot's done a great job with the sponsors. <coughs> She's found loads of sponsors. And we would like to every day present one of the sponsors and thank them very much. We know you all appreciate it because it makes it much cheaper. I also would like this morning to make sure that everybody knows Roland. We haven't introduced Roland formally. We've been too busy with this. Yeah, but Roland, they all know you. He's done a great job. Thanks very much. And And we have made this day one scores official, so that's the first official function for today. Um, if we move to the next slide, please. Um, a couple of domestic things. Saturday evening, Saturday evening, there's a big party. And all of you will have been given two tickets uh, in your pack. If you have more people you want to bring to the party, you have to buy more tickets. Uh, and you buy them from Margot, or for, no, from the, you buy them from the bar here. So if you need more tickets, you buy them at the bar. Um, we would also like to mention all the motorbikes. There's motorbikes and scooters and cars outside. And, okay. Each one of them has a number. It's like a competition. And you can look at the motorbikes and the cars, and you can vote. You pick up a voting paper, and you decide which one you like most, which one you think is the nicest one. And at the end of the competition, the guy who gets the most votes from you and from the public, he will get a free flight in a glider. So please vote for the car or motorbike you would most like to have at home. Yeah, is, is it? Yeah, and the second prize gets two flights in a glider. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, uh, official classification after yesterday. The, I mean, the uh, top three places Maximilian, Christophe, and Giorgio. Um, we don't put the zero points in because there is no specific order. Yeah? You're all equally at the bottom. Yeah? <laughs> So there's plenty of room to climb up if the weather cooperates. Yeah. So there's a couple of things about the flying. And we have a number of comments about the hospital control point, and we looked at the options. And we, had, we, end, we, we realized that actually there are only two options, well, three options. We raised the height of the finish, which we didn't want to do. We put a, a height limit at the hospital, which we didn't want to do because of the problem of you having to be exactly right about the height and worry about penalties. And the other option was to move it, so we moved it. We've moved the control point about one kilometer to the south. This is the lowest place we can find on that ridge. Uh, it's about the control point is 50 meters lower, but the ground before the control point is only just a little bit lower than the hospital. We have you have to come over the ridge to come home, yeah? But it, the new control point is away from the hospital. It's over trees, it's over open countryside. But it's close enough to the hospital, if you have an accident, you can be there really quickly. Yeah? <laughs> British humour, you got it. <laughs> so, the new waypoint list is on Soaring Spot, it's on the website. You have the coordinates, you're all very clever guys, and I'm sure you can work out how to put that into your computer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the other thing I'd like to talk about from yesterday is you had quite a few comments about the, uh, the problem in the first one or two thermals. People being close to each other. There were some comments about people turning in the opposite direction. And Giorgio and I looked at it this morning, 
And in fact, it's remarkably good. It's remarkably disciplined. In the first thermal, there were 16 gliders, and they all turned exactly the same way. The second thermal, not quite so disciplined, but it didn't look too bad considering the mountain. The problem is that we don't, if we are going to have a competition like this, it's up to you guys to manage that part of the flight. Yeah? You all watch Formula One car racing. And you know in the Formula One, you watch the start, you watch the first bend, and if everybody gets around the first bend, you go and have a drink, yeah? because nothing happens then for a while. Yeah? We're in a little bit of a similar situation. The first thermal is the first bend. Yeah? So when you get in the first bend, the important thing is to get up and then start the flight. Because actually, we know the first really critical part of the flight, in terms of security, is to get the first thermal and get separated and get going. In Seastron, we had a situation where, after the start, we tried to give you two options. So people, some people could go right, some could go left. In this situation, we don't really have that uh, capability. Because of the airspace in Lugano, because of the mountain, because of the low cloud base, you can only really go one way, and everybody will go more or less to the same thermal. The important thing for you to remember is not to be aggressive about it. And I'm sure you're not, because I know all of you, and I know you're all very sensible guys. When you come to the thermal, a little bit more careful coming into the thermal, a little bit less of a pull-up, a little bit slower, just to make sure you all get organized in that first thermal, get some altitude, and then it's easier to separate. Uh, I, only you guys can manage that. Yeah? <laughs> we can't manage that for you. Uh, we will look again at the uh, second one because it had some more comments, but I don't think I need to say anything more about that. So, it's all Giorgio now. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I think we were all a little bit surprised this morning because nobody was expecting this, this weather situation. Uh, even the commercial side and all the professional probably have done some mistakes because... Uh, it was all sun, and then at 8 o'clock in the morning, some cloud appears in the, on, the, on the forecast. So, as we can see from the analysis on the ground last night, nothing has changed. We have a high-pressure ridge on, uh, on uh, southern Europe, so we don't see any strange. This is an analysis, it's not a forecast, this is reality. This is uh, in altitude at fly level 180, Still the same situation as yesterday, so nothing changed. But obviously, something has changed. From the infrared picture, we could almost see nothing. This is due to the fact that these clouds are very low, and the temperature is very similar, homogene on, on all the area, so the, the infrared sees nothing. But obviously, the visible one, we are in the, the circle in the center. So it's just above us. All the commercial site forecast says that the, the, this humidity will disappear during the day. The problem is when. So we still, as glider pilots, as we all are, we are optimistic. So we keep calm and we, we monitor the situation and we just prepare for flying. Uh, the thermal prognosis for today, it's this one. So this is the situation it forecast. We are now around this time. So middle cloud cover intense. Middle cloud cover will, uh, will reduce the intensity. Some low cloud cover going to disappear during the day. And from half past uh, 12, 1 o'clock, developing of clouds, cumulus clouds, with thermals lower than yesterday as a ceiling, but still flyable. This is uh, our area. The eastern part, so the Bergamo Valleys, doesn't look so nice. Uh, we know from experience that uh, in that area it's much more unstable than here, that it develops clouds much faster than here, and this means with this kind of situation probably there, we will have some towering cumulus or spread out cumulus, and this means we will not have a, a lot of sunshine over there. Any question? So, we thought that the idea of making a short task and to keep everybody very close here, because the only chance we have is to fly in a very 
small area just around uh, the two airfields, Varese and Alzate Varianza, but to try to make race free. So the task is like the other day, we start from Calcinati Airfield, we go to Erba, you already know the place, you were overflew already, back to Gemonio, that is just at the end of the ridge of uh, Campo di Fiori, Alzate Brianza Airfield, the new control point, as you can see, Varese Hospital is here, it's just one kilometer and a half south, and then it's just straight on to the runway. So it's uh, even better than Varese Hospital, where you were coming not completely aligned on the runway. This is a little bit better. You are a little bit more far away from the city, but anyway, there are buildings everywhere. So it's not, the problem is not solved at all, but at least uh, we, you don't overfly the hospital. Yesterday, there was a, an helicopter stopped on top of the roof, and the pilot was not very happy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we decided to move from that point because this is an emergency helicopter, so he has the, the right to, to take off and land. Uh, it's it's uh, it's an important service for the community. So we moved out. I hope it will be okay, but it's always up to you how you are managing your flight in the last part. I cannot fly uh, or, or pilot for you from the ground. Any question about the task? Okay, so uh, about outlanding, I don't think we need to speak again because the area is exactly the same, same place, same field, same airfield, same airstrips, nothing special. Task is very short. We keep going on with the same schedule. Yep. So, right. Yeah, we can move the scale just beside, because the, uh, where the scale were, it, it was on the grass. But just five meters from that point, it's a, it's a road. It's grass, but it's a road below, so it's hard. It will not go down. We just move five meters beside. Okay? okay? Is it good enough? Okay, thank you. Thank you. We, we, you can see it's going to be a difficult day. We plan to be on the runway for 12.30. I don't think we'll be launching at 1 o'clock. I think it will be later. But I would like you to be ready to push back at 12.30 for launching at 1 o'clock. If we are able to launch, great. And if we have to wait, well, that's what we have to do. Uh, there is, we will obviously keep you informed best we can. If anybody's interested, the uh, video guys are going to show the highlights video from yesterday straight after the briefing. So it's nice for you to watch that, have a cup of coffee, and, and we'll see you on the runway. Thanks very much for your cooperation. Thank you. See you on the green.
Good afternoon and welcome to Verezi. This is day three. Um, we're hoping to have a good race today. We had a fantastic race yesterday, really, really close. Uh, first three across the line were Sebastian, Max, and um, uh, Romo uh, from the Czech Republic. Although that wasn't the final result, it was uh, very, very close. But unfortunately, they uh, were a little low uh, over the finish line and there were some time penalties applied. start from Varese, like that is too small. We start again from Calcinate, you go to Lovere, that is a few kilometers east of where you were yesterday, so just on the other side of the mountain. Then back to Saltrio, which is a, a village at the mountain San Giorgio, very close to the cave you have on the, on the mountain, the mine you have on the mountain. Then we go to Erba, very close to Alzate, very close to the ridge, and back home with Varese Hospital reporting point. So, first race in the final and you come away with a point. Well yeah, done. Yeah, that's not bad, is it? <laughs> yeah, no, very good. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, better than zero points, you know. It's so disappointing to, you know, fly a good task and get zero points. So I'm really happy about this one point. What, uh, tell us what you're doing. I prepare my logger, my second logger, because uh, it's better to have a, a second, maybe the first will fail, fail, so it's nice to have a second. What are you doing? Uh, I'm preparing my glider um, because it's, uh, my result from yesterday cannot be me. Must be the glider. Fantastic. Uh, we're just going to see if we can change the view to see where all of the gliders are. Where's the leading pack? Anyway, to, they started at 14.10 and uh, in less than one hour they are almost, they are almost uh, at the turning point that is 101 kilometers. So the average speed of the flight is uh, yeah. pretty good. 100 kilometers an hour, not too shabby. <laughs> With a gain of altitude. so. Yeah, then it will increase. Yes. So we're expecting a faster race today than yesterday. Yeah, I expect a faster race, yes. Giorgio taking a more southerly route, um, following the ridges, but he's uh, 500 meters or so below uh, the others. Werner Armen and Sebastian, 1700 meters. Just waiting to see if they stop and climb or whether they'll push on. Well, Giorgio's doing well. I mean, he's not hung around, is he? No. He's really got it. He's really going for it now, and he's really de he's decided that that's his strategy. He's going to try and make it work. So first three, they may well be able to see him now. <laughs> He'll be high. Yeah. Already turned out, so, so he's he turned. 
Um, he's back. Second so round will be Sebastian. Yeah, he's, uh, he's crossing the others, but he has 400 meter advantage. advantage yeah. With a, if we can imagine, we have around two meter per second average speed in climbing. 400 meter is 200 seconds, so he's, uh, he has around a three minutes advantage. And with these three minutes at the average speed they fly, it's around 10 kilometers. So Christoph Abade, second to turn, followed by Roman Mershek. Maximilian and Sebastian. And then another group just behind them. You can see the chasing pack behind. Giorgio comfortable at 600 meters, where the chasing pack are between 400 and 800 meters. Christoph Abaday just having a fantastic pull up there. It went from 400 meters to 580 meters. And there's a fantastic picture of how close the airfield is to the lake. In fact, uh, as you go off the end of the runway on your aerato, you go over a short line of trees and then the next thing you see is the water. So Roma Moshek in second place and closely followed by the chasing pack. Christophe Abadé from France. Uh, again, not a, a a mountain pilot that you would know, uh, but done very well today. Uh, he's doing really well here. And in third place, and it looks like Christoph Rusch in fourth, and Sebastian in fifth, Maximilian in sixth, Uli up there as well, and seventh. What was that like? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, because I flew alone. <laughs> I leave the really mess thermal with some riders lower than the other and I flew alone. W Were you enjoying being out on your own there? Yes, I enjoyed it. <laughs> we could see the grin on your face from back here. <laughs> Thank you. So you've had a very good day today? Yes, I had a good day. Today is gone. <laughs> well, we'll see you on the podium tonight. Fine, I am happy. <laughs> well done, Giorgio. Bossia! Right. It's very good. <laughs> 